Hey, John here with Prime Studios, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Pentax K1000 SLR film camera. Now in my personal opinion, this is the absolute best camera that you can use to learn photography. This isn't any uh, Pentax K1000, this is my Pentax K1000 that I got when I was about uh, 8 or 9 years old, and my father taught me how to use it, but now I'm going to show you. Uh, the great thing about this camera is that it gives you absolutely everything you need and nothing you don't, and it's all manual, so it's perfect for learning. So let's get started. First off is the battery, which is located on the bottom of the camera. It's this right here. Now the easiest way to get the battery compartment open is to use a quarter. Just go ahead and, and twist that off. And this camera uses a little button battery, which is, I believe, a PX76 battery. Now this battery uh, is really only for controlling the light meter itself in the camera. That's all it's for. Because the awesome thing about this camera is that it's all mechanical. The shutter, the aperture, they're completely mechanical and don't require any electricity in order to work. Which means you can technically take pictures without this battery at all, you just won't have a light meter to read off of. So V76PX, there we go, that's what it is. Now this is a Varda battery, which I'm a big fan of Varda batteries. And you can see that on the back of the cover here, it has the positive symbol. So, and on the positive symbol, the battery right here. So you want to put the battery in this orientation when you put it back in. Like this. Now for those of you who don't know how to load film yet in this camera, I actually have a whole separate video on how to load film, which I'm going to put a link right here on how to do that. Uh, but before you do that, you want to make sure and take note on your film of what ISO it is. The ISO is the light sensitivity of the film, and it's going to be measured in a number like this. Here it says 400, so that's the ISO that we're going to go with today. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm not actually going to load any film, um, so I can show you a couple things. But definitely take note of that. So after you've loaded the film, you want to go ahead and set your ISO. On this camera, the way you do it is around this knob up here. Now, if you'll notice, there's a little window right here. It says ASA. That stands for American Standards Association um, instead of ISO. So it's just an older organization that's no longer around that would determine things like the sensitivity of film. But the numbers are going to be the same. So the way you do it is you lift up the outer ring on this. And as you can see, you can turn it and change it to the ISO of the film you just loaded. So I, uh, in this video, we're going to go with 400. So that's 400 ISO film. This is going to determine what your light meter shows in the viewfinder. Uh, so it's very important that you set that correctly. Now for those of you who don't know the basics of how an SLR camera works, uh, I actually made a whole other video uh, for that, which I'll put a link right here. So you can click on that and uh, that way you'll understand all the basics of what's going on uh, with these settings I'm about to show you. So the first setting I can show you is the shutter speed. The shutter speed is controlled by this dial on the top here and you actually turn the whole thing. Lifting up the outer ring and turning it, that changes the ISO, but turning the whole thing here, that's actually for shutter speed. All these numbers here indicate fractions of a second. So 1,000 is 1 1,000th of a second. Uh, 125 is 1 1 25th of a second. And if I go all the way down, if I do 2, that's half a second, or 1 over 2. If I do 1, that's 1 full second. Now if I do B, that stands for bulb, meaning um, if, as long as I hold down the shutter button, uh, the shutter will stay open. So let me cock the camera here, and I can hold down the shutter button, and the shutter's still open, and then it'll stay open until I let it go. And I can do something like eighth of a second or fifteenth of a second, and... Now as far as changing the aperture, it's going to be this ring right here on the lens. The smaller numbers indicate a larger aperture opening, which is the iris inside the lens. A bigger number indicates a smaller aperture, so it's kind of uh, opposites. Now the viewfinder for the K1000 is very, very simple. On the right hand side you're going to see a needle that can move up and down. And you're going to see a plus and a minus symbol. As a photographer your job is to adjust the shutter speed and the aperture in order to get that needle in the middle. In the middle means that the picture will be properly exposed. Now you can see what happens if I uh, adjust my shutter speed here. If I slow it down, do slower shutter speeds, the needle moves up towards the positive mark, meaning my picture is going to be brighter and brighter. If I make my shutter speed faster, so 60th of a second, 125th of a second, 250th of a second, then it's going to go down into the negative. My picture is going to be dark. My goal is to adjust my settings, obviously, to get it right in the middle. And when in doubt, overexposing a little bit is usually the best way to go. 
Now the other thing I can do is to move my aperture. Now if I carefully move my aperture here, you can tell that the needle is also moving. Either the shutter speed dial or the aperture ring on the lens itself will adjust that needle. They can go up or down. Next is the focus. The focus ring is on the lens itself, and if I move it here very slowly, you'll see in the very center uh, is a small circle. Now, depending on what the distances of the object you're trying to focus on is, the circle in the middle will change from fuzzy to clear once it's in focus. And if it's really out of focus, it will be very, very fuzzy within that circle. Now, one very last important thing to remember is that the light sensor in this camera is activated when light actually enters the lens. So that's the on-off switch, is actually the lens cap itself. So if you want to turn off the light meter, you put on the lens cap. Keep in mind that if you don't keep the lens cap on when the camera is stored, it can be very easy for the battery for the light meter to drain very quickly. So whenever you store your camera or don't want to use it, make sure to put the lens cap back on to turn off that light meter. Now you're going to see some other markings on the lens here. Uh, besides the aperture itself, you're going to see some numbers going from 4, 8, 16, 22. This is referring to what aperture you're on. So let's say I'm on f16. And if I look here, I can turn, this is my, your focusing ring. So this is what you turn to focus the lens. So if I'm, say, like this. I have a 16 on this side and a 16 on this side. Now if I look up, I can see measurements in feet and in meters. What this is telling me is that if I'm at f16, my depth of field, or basically the things that are in focus, are between three feet away and about one and a half feet away. So anything that's between one and a half and three feet away from the camera is going to be in focus. Anything uh, in front of me that's, in, or in front of uh, one and a half feet or beyond three feet from the camera is going to start to go out of focus at f16 on this particular lens. That's what these numbers indicate. And then you can also see it in meters in the yellow numbers. Now the actual uh, way you take a picture is the shutter button, which is located right here. Now, it's very obvious, very simple. All you have to do is just push it down. Right now, the camera's not cocked, so pushing it down doesn't do anything. But I can wind the, with the winding lever here that's going to advance the film. And if I actually had film in here, this knob here would turn. If you have film in your camera and it's not turning when you pull this advance knob, then there's something wrong. And your film's not probably not loaded correctly. But now the shutter is cocked, and if I push it down, then it takes a photo. Now let's say you wanted to activate the shutter here while the camera was on a tripod and you wanted to reduce vibrations. There's a way you can do that with a tool like this. This is a shutter release cord, uh, a plunger type, which as you can see as I push down the button, it sticks out this little thing here. You can attach it by screwing it into the top of the shutter button. So whenever I push it, then it takes the photo. Now another cool thing you can do uh, with these types of plungers is if you switch your shutter to bulb mode so that the shutter will stay open um, as long as the shutter is pushed down, well, you can usually find a little mechanism like this, turn the wheel, and if I push it down, it will then lock down. And because it's in bulb mode, the shutter's still open, and it's going to stay open until I push down on this little circle thing. I can turn it here. And then the shutter door closes. So that's for exposures like on a tripod that are very long. So uh, 10 seconds or 30 seconds or five minutes or whatever you want to do. Now, an important point for me to make about the winding lever is that I have always gotten into the habit of taking a picture and then um, immediately winding the film again. Now, the problem with this on this camera is that the shutter button does not have any kind of lock switch or anything like that. It does have a little indicator here indicating whether or not it's wound. So if I take a picture, it turns black. If I wind it, it turns red. So that's kind of like, is it wound, is it not wound? You can tell just by looking right there. Now, the problem with this is that if it's wound and you say place it in your camera bag, you can accidentally hit the shutter button and take a picture when you didn't mean to and thus waste a picture. So it's kind of important to remember if you're about to uh, take a picture and then maybe put the camera back in your bag right away to not uh, wind the film again. Now you can also see as I wind the, the winder here and take pictures, I have this little indicator here. This is indicating how many pictures uh, or what picture I'm on with my current roll of film. Now currently you can buy rolls in either 24 or 36 exposure. And uh, keep in mind that every time you wind, 
this should also be turning because it's advancing the film across the back here. Now, in order to change lenses on the Pentax cameras, the release button is right here. So what you do is you push that down and you turn the lens counterclockwise. Now, on Pentax cameras, they have a red dot, both here on the camera and on the lenses. And this is true of all Pentax cameras, whether it's older film cameras or their newer digital ones. The really nice thing about Pentax cameras is that I can use this older film uh, lens on a actual Pentax digital camera, and I have a video for that, and I'll link to it right here on how to do that. But when you're ready to attach uh, another lens on there, all you have to do is line up the two red dots and then twist in a clockwise motion until it clicks. There you go. Now the K1000 does have the ability to use a flash. Now you have your hot shoe up here, and it's just a single uh, contact. So it's just gonna make a flash go off. So it's gonna be all manual flash, just like the rest of the camera's manual. But you'll notice that there's a red X. Now on your shutter speed here, you'll notice at 1 60th of a second, there's also a red X. That's because that's your shutter sync speed. Anytime you're using flash with this camera, you should be using 1 60th of a second. Another uh, cool uh, flash accessory is if you look here, there's another red X. This is indicating what's called the PC sync port. So I can take the little cover off here. And this is actually a little bit older style um, connector port for what's called a PC sync cord. So there's a connector you can push in here and it's a cord that runs from the camera to an off camera flash. So like for a studio flash or a speed light flash off camera. And you can even connect a, a current radio trigger with the right cord. Um, and as of the making of this video, PC sync cords are still pretty widely available. Now once you're all done taking your pictures, um, the release button for rewinding the film is on the bottom here. What you do is you just push that down, and that's going to unlock this mechanism here. And then your rewind knob is right here. You can see it says R for rewind, and it has an um, arrow indicating which direction to go. So it actually opens up like this, and you're going to rewind the film back into its canister all the way until you can, you'll be able to feel it go all the way back in. Now once you're done with that, you can open up the back of the camera simply by lifting up on the rewind knob and it pops open. Then you can go ahead and take your film out and get it developed. Then you can go ahead and close the camera back up and lock it down.